Welcome to this week's episode of the Course Building Secrets Podcast. I am thrilled that you are here today. Hey, in this episode, I'm going to go a little bit behind the scenes and share with you a little of our launch strategy. So one of the things that I think is so powerful about being able to speak to you guys in this podcast, on the YouTube video, on all of the things is that we're able to share our best practices, both what we're doing with clients as well as what we're doing in our own business. And so hopefully it serves you because um, it's not theory, it's not information, it's really actionable tips that we're applying all the time, uh, again, both in our business and also uh, for our clients. So today is no exception, so I wanna make sure that, that I dive into a little bit of the detail of how we're doing uh, this launch that we're working on right now and um, and some different pieces that I think will will help you. Hey, and if you like these episodes, uh, both on the podcast and on YouTube, will you give us a like, a subscribe, a rating, wherever you're listening, however you're seeing it, um, go ahead and, um, and just click on whatever it is that you can click on that uh, lets you know, lets us know that you appreciate what we're doing because um, obviously we love giving you this free content, um, but we want to know that you're listening. All right, there you go. I'm going to jump right in. Okay, so today I want to talk about your signature presentation. And what that is, is sometimes people call it a, a webinar or a, a workshop or a challenge or whatever else. But basically what it is, is kind of the, uh, the initial training that you are doing to help somebody make a buying decision. So they've come into your world in one way, shape, or form, either through this challenge or uh, training, right? They're interested in attending because they like what you have to say, or they've come in um, through your email list or something else. And uh, and so what this is doing is helping them understand what it is that you do, how uh, you like what your approach is, what your methodology is to the problem, to the solution that that gives gives them the solution to the problem that they have, and then whether or not they want to work with you in a, a purchasing capacity. So your signature presentation is really all about that. Usually we recommend doing one main signature presentation. You could have some variations of it, um, but usually you're just doing one that is um, teeing up what it is that your philosophy is, the methodology, and then uh, giving them an invitation to continue working with you. Okay, so that's the frame in which I'm talking about today. So again, you could call it a perfect webinar, you could call it a signature presentation, it doesn't really matter what you call it, but it's basically that kind of initial piece of training or um, content that you're giving to help them, uh, one, solve kind of one immediate problem and then um, basically ask them for uh, a broader commitment. Okay, so a lot of times when people approach this when they aren't used to this game is that it's just a training session, right? You're just giving some training, some high value content, and then you're going to ask them for the sale at the end and then um, and then hope that they buy, right? And, um, and so one of the things I want to share with you today is sort of the strategy behind how you put something like this together because it's not just showing up and sharing information. It, the, the point is, yes, you want to elevate your status, right? You want people to see that you have experience and that you know what you're talking about, right? That you're actually not just, uh, you know, like an, an overnight expert, right? And, and so that's super important. However, what you don't want to do is give too um, much training um, because that's not actually going to help them solve the problem. What's going to help them solve the problem is giving them the belief that it, solving their problem is possible. Because remember, where they are on the journey is they're just sort of at the first place where um, before they signed up for your thing, they're either wandering around kind of hoping that somebody is going to come into their world to give them the answer that they're looking for, right? Like, I have a problem. I don't know how to solve it. I wonder if there's anyone out there who could help me, right? That's sort of the mindset that they're in. Or they're like, I don't even know what questions to ask, but I know that something's not working. Which direction do I go? How do I move forward, right? So, so remember, uh, whenever you are working on uh, some sort of product or service, 
it's an answer to a problem that somebody has, right? It's not just like, I'm an expert and I want to like, just give you information. That's not actually going to sell or build your business. So you, you need to be solving the problem that people are wandering around hoping that somebody is going to provide an answer for them. And then the next step is to, to put it into some sort of framework that, that allows those people to not only identify that they have a problem and that you're the person to help them solve the problem, but that it's going to be easy for them or possible for them to solve the problem. So uh, with that, there are sort of some key pieces that you put together um, outside of the teaching elements, and, um, and then they help kind of frame what the teaching element should be. Because you do want to give a lot of value in the training that you're doing, but the value is a little bit different than you may uh, think, right? It's not just like giving them information or giving them a formula. It's actually taking them on a journey. So the very first thing is that you want to uh, be very clear about what your um, solution is, what your vehicle is, right? Like how you can help solve that problem and what that looks like. The most successful ones are the ones that have some sort of um, methodology framework, something that's uh, packaged, right? It's the, you know, Tara's methodology to this, right? Like it's, it's an actual, uh, it, it feels like it's a physical manifestation of um, an outcome, right? So that's the very first thing that you want to do. So if you can give them the belief that, that the, this vehicle that you have, this solution, this product or service is the answer that they're looking for that's going to solve their problem faster and better and easier than anything else, then they're going to buy Right, and so that's the first identification: is um, what what is it that you need to sort of package and talk about um, in, in order to get them to believe that you're you've got the best option for them? Because that's what you need to believe. Now, if you don't believe that, then you need to do the work first and make sure that you have a solution that you believe in so strongly that you know that it's the fastest, the easiest, and the best solution for somebody to solve the problem that they're wandering around having. That's the first order of business. So if you haven't done that, then you need to do that first. And that doesn't mean you have to totally build it out, but it means that you have to have uh, a, the strategy for what your framework is, what your proprietary methodology is, because that's what people are paying for, right? They're paying for the fastest path to success. They're not just paying for you to, to give them information that's not valuable for them. And so that's the very first thing. If you don't believe that, then you have to believe it first before you can help other people believe it. But the the goal is um, that you are helping them see that your vehicle, your framework, your methodology, your product, your service, whatever it is that you are selling is the way that they're going to get to the answer that they're looking for. Okay, so work on that first um, and, and really feel confident that this is the solution. They can't get it anywhere else. Um, if they go somewhere else, it's going to cost them more time, cost them more money, and, and whatever else, right? So that's the very first order of business. Then the way that you're going to structure your presentation is actually not in teaching elements, right? So a lot of times we'll do, um, you know, the three secrets or the three um, items or the three this or the three that, right? Uh, uh, there's a whole kind of psychology behind the rules of three. I'm not going to talk about today, but typically um, you have about that much time and uh, people think in, the, in, in uh, terms of uh, threes. So... Uh, three secrets, three tips, three strategies, three mistakes, whatever it is, right? Typically, that's how you're going to frame up your presentation. You don't have to all the time, but um, any more than three, you don't really have time. Any less than three, um, then you're not actually going to tee up the three things I'm going to tell you are the secrets to being able to move somebody to make a, a, a good buying decision that they feel comfortable with. Okay, so there are three main sort of beliefs or objections that you need to overcome that people have around the vehicle that you're selling. So around the answer to their problem. So there's three main kind of things that people trip up against. One is, do they believe 
that your solution or the solution to their problem will help them, right? So it doesn't even need to be your product or service at that point, but like, do they believe that there's a solution to their problem and do they believe that it's possible to fix whatever they're dealing with? That's the first sort of false belief you need to overcome uh, because that's what's going on in their head is like, have this problem. I don't know if it's solvable. I, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do, blah, 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 all the things. And so um, that is the very first order of business is how do you help them see that this solution is going to move them from point A to point B. So that's your first job is to overcome that false belief that this vehicle, this, this um, solution will or will not work for them. Okay. So that's the first thing that you're teeing up as, um, as kind of the teaching element is you're teaching them to go from this false belief to having belief that this is possible for them. So it's all about building uh, the possibility that this op option will work for them. It's not teaching them the, the framework and, and you know the six components and what they all are and going into detail about all the things, right? It's teeing it up, but it's not, it, you're not teaching each of the steps, right? So this is the what and the why, not the how. Um, the how comes in them purchasing your program. So it's why is it important? What is it? Around the wrapper of this being what's possible for them, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is you have to work through their internal false belief that it's not something that they can do, right? There's some um, internal challenge that they're like, well, that may work for other people, but I don't know if I can be successful with it, right? For whatever reason. And so you have to help them bridge that gap where it, it, you know, can I do this? Is it possible for me? I know this works for other people, but I don't know if I can do it. So you have to help them jump over that hurdle, which is giving them, um, you know, examples, uh, case studies, stories, different things that help them see that other people like them have also, who had that problem, also have been able to um, overcome the challenge. And so that's the internal belief, uh, false belief that needs to happen. Uh, throughout the presentation is to move them into it's possible and not only is it possible but if other people can do it I can do it and that's that's the goal is to get them to that place by the end they're like I can do this this is possible if that person can do it I can do it this, this isn't as hard as I've made it out in my mind to be that's that second um, kind of false belief that you need to tip over in the middle of this presentation. Then the third one is the external false belief. And this one is, okay, well, I believe that this is the right solution for me. I believe that I can do it, but there's some sort of force outside of me that's not going to let that happen. Uh, time, uh, money, technology, all of those different things are great, um, great things to look at to see, is that what's in, in the way of somebody making a decision to solve their problem, right? I don't have time. I'm already overwhelmed. There's so many things going on in my business, in my life. I know I can't devote the time to this, right? That's, a, that's an external uh, belief. Um, tech, I don't have the right tools. I don't understand technology. I don't want to learn technology. I know I can't do this until I master that. I'm going to put it off, right? I'm not going to make a decision because that just seems overwhelming to me. That's a, a an external false belief. Um, and then uh, money, right? I don't have the money. I don't have the ability to pay for a solution to this problem. So all of those are examples of external false beliefs. And so your job is to, again, get them from point A to point B to they believe right now that those are their hurdles, that they cannot move forward because they've got these obstacles in the way. Your job is to tip them over and get them past the obstacles, past those hurdles so they can move forward. Um, and so 
these are the, the strategic elements that need to go in each one of your signature presentations so that you can help people uh, not only know that this is the right solution for them and that it's possible to solve the problem that they have, but to get them past their sort of um, level of inertia, right? Like we all have something that stands in our way of moving forward and taking things to the level that we really want to be um, operating at, right? So if there's a problem that you have, you, you're, you're usually trying to solve the problem, but there's a huge gap between wanting to solve the problem and actually solving the problem. And so the people who are able to make a buying decision have the ability to see how each one of those false beliefs or objections um, can be eliminated to get to their outcome. Now, if somebody's pain is really, really strong, that strategic, um, the strategic points I just went over are less important. They're all important, but like less important because that pain is so strong that they have the internal motivation to to solve that pain. But most of the time, 80% of the time, uh, people need a little bit of help to realize that it's possible and not as hard as they're making it out to be, right? And so that's what that signature presentation is. Now, within each of those, you're actually teaching, right? You're giving stories, you're giving case studies, you're helping them have a couple of sort of um, uh, fast wins for each of the things that you're teaching so they see that it's possible, they see that they can apply it to their world and move things forward. Uh, but the whole thing isn't about teaching. And I think that was one of the things that I really had to learn in this whole process when I started this, um, when I started kind of studying this years ago, is that I'm a natural teacher, right? Like that is my thing. I love teaching. I love training. I love designing training. I love doing all of those things. But the, um, it, you know, and I was like, oh, I can teach all day. Like it's no problem, blah, blah, blah. I'm really comfortable with that. But the, the, the sales process, the moving a prospective buyer to purchase is not just about teaching and showing that you um, have that knowledge. It's about bringing them along on the journey and meeting them where they are. And where they are is they have a problem and they don't know whether or not they can trust you. You have the solution. And if you know, you're able to help them um, move forward, right? And so that's your job in this in this signature presentation. If they've signed up to to you know spend some time with you, your job is to help them move from point A to point B. And where they are right now in the journey is just looking to see if they can make a buying decision with you. Like, do they trust you? Do they like you? Do they think that you're the person that's going to help them? And if they're not then you say, great, like, you know, keep looking. Somebody will be able to help you. Don't try and help everyone, but be very specific about helping them move over their hurdles. So hopefully this serves you because I think that a lot of times, um, well, I mean, we deal with this with our clients all the time. And um, even, you know, yesterday I had to go through this activity because I'm doing this, this, act, um, this presentation for my program, um, I had to go and sit down and do this activity again, right? So every single time I do a presentation, I go in and I look at, okay, what's the vehicle? Uh, you know, what's what are the false beliefs that I need to help my my prospective co customers see in order to make a buying decision? And what objections are they going to have, right? Like, what are the things that they're tripping up against that may cause them? to say, well, I don't know if now is the right time. I don't know if I have the, the finance. I don't know if it's a priority, like all the things, right? And so I literally, every single time I do this, I go back and I, I look at those. Because again, I, like I said earlier, for me, it's really easy to teach. I have frameworks. I have an overarching methodology. I've got insights and ideas and all the things. If you've listened to the podcast, like you know, right? Like I, um, I have lots of knowledge. I've been doing this for, you know, 20 plus years. And so my tendency is just to, to, to show up and serve and teach. And so for me, it's a disciplined habit for me to, to look at it and go, okay, so what's my objective? How can I help my prospective 
uh, customers see how valuable it is because we have the tools to get them from point A to point B. And so they don't need to be, um, you know, having that challenging, but they don't have to be having that problem. But my job is to help them uh, move forward and stop kind of staying stuck, right? Um, and so, so again, like I do this each and every time. So yesterday I, I spent the afternoon just going through and validating that I had the right pieces in place. Um, so then I can wrap that around the training. So when I ask for uh, the next step, people will know that either it's for them or not for them, right? It, now is the right time or now is not the right time. Uh, this is the, the place to put their investment uh, dollars or it's not, right? They can make an educated decision because they have um, all of the information and uh, examples of how other people have overcome those challenges. So hopefully this serves you. Um, obviously we go a lot deeper in this in the coaching and programs that I offer um, because this is a key strategy in your customer's journey when you help them help them kind of you know get over that place of like having the problem and that you have the solution. And the more you can frame out the vehicle, the solution, the, the product or service that you offer, the more clarity you give them on the roadmap that they have to go through there, the success path, whatever you want to call it, um, the easier it is for them to have the confidence that, that they can come into your program and get results, right? Because there's something specific that they're going through and they can see it. Um, so even if this is your beta and you're doing it for the first time, you don't actually sell it without having your signature framework, your success path, your, your methodology, whatever you want to call it. I don't care what you call it. Without having that dialed in and set, that is the very first order of business, is that you do not just like decide you're going to do a, a new topic or a new course or whatever you're working on and throw it out there without having that uh, that signature framework set up. Um, and so again, these are the things that we're working on a lot um, in the learn experience and kind of the private clients that I work with is um, getting this out of your head and getting it into a packaged program, a, pr a packaged product, uh, even if you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, that allows you to start to uh, develop your systems so that you can grow and scale as quickly as possible. If you're interested in that, just give me a shout. Uh, there are lots of ways to get a hold of me. You can go out on the website, tlslearning.com, and, um, and that you know, you can just schedule a meeting with me right there or jump into one of our programs. Or if you want to see this in action, you can show up to one of the signature presentations. Um, but hopefully this serves you and hopefully you're taking notes because these are uh, very strong golden nuggets that a lot of people aren't talking about um, because they they aren't sort of sharing that, right? It's It's the ninja tricks. Um, of how do you sell, how do you get your prospects to uh, really understand and want to be a part of what you're doing. Um, so there you go. Have a great day.